Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I can't remember if we've had an Eden run lately. Have we had an Eden run lately? We're gonna, doesn't matter. Eden runs are a lot of fun. Are we basically Blue Baby, but with like the red, white, and black here? Uh, safety Pin Poop. That is an interesting start. Let me just hold the seat up there for a little longer so future Ryan won't be mad at me when I look at this video to see what the seat is. GDNB? Gosh darn it, Nate Bradley? Video games mean zero. Well, that don't, I don't really mean that. But that's um, the first words that came to mind there. Zero out of zero, though, which is basically infinity they mean the most. Well, not the most. I mean, you know, you still have, like, family and friends and your health and stuff. It's up there. At least from, like, a hobby standpoint and professional for many people as well. Anyway, let's get going here. I'm going to start out this episode by saying... Like, by recommending that you close this video and watch a different episode, but for real, if the video's up yet, and actually, now that I think about it, it probably won't be, you should watch the first hour of the Northern Lion Live Super Show VOD on YouTube for, uh, the Isaac game that Nick and I played as Eden. It is straight up the worst Eden run I've ever seen in my entire life, but is remarkably entertaining in spite of that. I would recommend, if you're watching this a couple days after this video goes live, you should go check that one out. Now, Mind you, you will have to deal with me talking to Nick. It'll be part one there. I'm not trying to say that you're not, you don't like Nick, but maybe you prefer like my stream, um, uh, standard uh, stream of consciousness dialogue. Oh. Standard stream of consciousness dialogue as opposed to a more conversational tone. That's understandable. I'll tell you what, we actually can. This is like, this happens once every like 15 uh, eons, which I believe equals uh, a fuck ton of years. We can actually use Broken Remote effectively. And by effectively, I don't really mean effectively. But I mean with some kind of purpose associated with it. This is more along the lines of what I was looking for here. Um, we can use it and possibly get an error room or something. I'm just hoping to go to our... Uh hoping to go to our item room first so I don't accidentally teleport away from the floor. I don't know if Broken Remote can actually take you to the candy shop and let you lick the lollipop that is the error room, but I, I'm gonna give it a, you know, the old college try here and see if it works. Oh, Curse of the Unknown? Telepathy for dummies? I kinda like the poop more than telepathy for dummies, to be honest with you. So, th the obvious other interaction here is that we can easily get out of curse rooms uh, and other rooms that we might not necessarily love just by popping down this, uh, this poop with the broken remote, but I'm not fully convinced that this is actually the right way to do it, and we're going to be missing out on a lot of money by not being able to use the poop every room unless we want to risk teleporting and, you know, maybe putting ourselves in a weird spot that way. But it's it's novel enough that I want to go with it, and hey, it's an Eden run, so why wouldn't I, right? Like, Eden's all about the mixing it up, you know? What happens in Eden stays in Eden. I believe that's what uh, Chairman Vegas said. Let's see what we got here. Old bandage. It's decent. Better or worse than other HP upgrades? Why, yes it is. <laughs> a little bit of both, I think. Um, it's Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Sometimes you need that red heart, sometimes you're very happy to have the red heart not uh, not actually manifest itself so that you can maintain some Horror of Babylon or permanent Polaroid invincibility or something like that. <clears throat> For now, though. Curse of the Blind on the second floor in a row. Huge, like, detrimental thing for us to have this second Curse of the Blind here. Why is it hugely det detrimental? I'm assuming that you can probably figure it out for yourself, but this floor really is the tone setter, you know? Like how your junior year of high school sets, you know, your your tone for what colleges or vocational schools, etc., etc., you may or may not be able to attend. That's what the second floor does in Rebirth. It doesn't necessarily uh, screw you if you mess it up, but it, it certainly puts you in a position that is less preferable than you might like. Let's try it, I don't know. Hey, saved us a key. Sagittarius is a great item. And this doesn't actually mean that we're in a bad position because we have Curse of the Blind. It just means we could accidentally put ourselves in a bad position without really realizing it until it's too late. We could pick up soy milk, you know? We could pick up uh, Tiny Planet with some synergies that don't really work well with Tiny Planet. We could pick up Epic Fetus. There's a lot of things that could go wrong here. Well, I'm, I'm looking very much forward to being able to teleport out of that big room down there and hopefully never seeing it again. So we'll actually... Blue Baby Soul. I mean, Blue Baby Soul is better, but it's more interesting this way, so I want to stick with it. There we go. We've teleported to the second secret room. Alright, I'm, I'm starting to buy into the idea that, uh, like, poop 
Doctor's Remote, or sorry, Broken Remote is actually viable for us here. It's actually helped us out quite a lot, saved us a few consumables. Let's go fight our boss. It is Pin, and Pin with, um... Pin with Penetrative Tears is just the easiest boss we could hope to fight right now next to, like, maybe Duke of Flies would be easier, because his shield wouldn't actually mean jack shit. So this is already basically over. We get a Tears Upgrade plus two Spirit Arts, which is pretty good, and we can always Strength Card in here if we need the HP. Which we don't, actually. The Mark is fantastic. Guppy's Collar is fine. And Brimstone has just won us the game. Yeah, we pretty much just just won the game right there. I don't know if you can be mad at me for that one, but I'm sure some people will find a way. Um, Rate of Fire is going to be good. Damage is going to be insane. Guppy Potential. That's really like, it's up there as far as like the best possible deals with the Devil Go. Um, that was three viable items, and you very, very rarely end up actually getting that. So I just wanted to explore the rest of the floor quickly, see if we can get maybe another Tinted Rock, because really the only thing that could fuck us on this run is a lack of HP. Cricket's Head, holy shit. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, we'll be leaving now. Could go to the sh- oh my god. Th I, what did I do to deserve this luck? I don't know what I did to deserve this luck, but I'm, I'm happy to have it. And we're gonna uh, not even use this on this floor, we're gonna start popping this on the next floor. And it, I know it might be a little bit vulgar to call a one run already, but man, this is looking one-ish for sure. Curse of the Labyrinth means we can actually see our items for once. I know it's a novel concept. I could use a little fuel myself and we could all use a little change. Good stuff. Even, like, I can almost, I can't tap shoot Brimstone, but I can totally leave before Brimstone is, like, absolutely done with shooting. Oh, man, Pandora's Box on Caves 1. I, if it's an XL floor, now that I think about it, as an XL floor, it probably counts as, uh, as Caves 2. So Pandora's Box might not be that viable for us. Weirdly enough, Pandora's Box would allow me to leave this room because I have the Doctor's Remote when I use it. So let's just put this down for a sec. We'll use Pandora's Box, see what we get. So it did give us an item. It's a range upgrade, which is terrible for us, but it's it's something at least. And our card is still strength, and then we'll teleport away. And admittedly, we're not shooting the poop. Which uh, is probably costing us a little bit of money, but I'm fairly not concerned about that, as you can probably guess, based on the fact that this run is already balling out of control. That was terrible damage that I should not have... Uh, Taken at all. There we go. Into the curse room. Unfortunately, we are going to take damage on the way out, but we didn't take damage on the way in. That's pretty much still the best we could hope for. This is almost like a built-in challenge run right now. I like it a lot. And there's our regular secret room with a ton of money. Hoping to teleport maybe into the shop. Doctor's remote I am not interested in at all. If I wanted to, I could probably make this the, uh, the fastest run we've had in a long time. I'm not going to say fast as ever, but we could probably do it pretty fast. Um, I do, by the way, really want to go to the shop now that we have the money for it. I was hoping to maybe teleport inside of it and save a key. It's not really that big of a deal if we can't do it, though. And of course, you know, you might be poo-pooing this idea already, but we're definitely going to be going to Boss Rush. If I can get to Boss Rush and teleport for free, I, I can't see any reason why I wouldn't do it. And I didn't even need to save a card for it this time. I can actually keep my card available and do uh, do whatever I want with it. Devil card? It probably beats the strength card. Although a strength card on a deal with the devil could actually allow us to take one extra deal that otherwise we'd be unable to do. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll stick with this for now. We'll see if we get a deal with the devil on this floor. It's not superbly likely. That's okay. HP upgrade, and now it's really unlikely that we'll need this uh, strength card for anything other than just like a damage and stats bonus on a particular fight that is annoying, I guess. There we go. Caffeine pill. Not quite what I was expecting. Luck up is nice though. Let's teleport to the other side of the map, or literally down one room, okay. No need to teleport into the secret room on this floor. This is insane. What are we at, like eight minutes? It's seven and a half minutes? We're already technically, if we wanted to be, we could be done with the caves right now. Catacomb, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, we actually have been to both of our item rooms, and now we're going to our shop as well. Uh, nine volt? I mean, I kind of don't see why we wouldn't. We can now use... Uh, 
the poop multiple times per room if the room goes on for a long time. Which I can't imagine that it would. And here's how much I'm liking this run right now. I actually chose to not take the cancer trinket in order to stick with this weird poop teleportation thing that's going on. Never say I don't have a, you know, a, a credit for absurdity. This is what I want in my life in Isaac. I want to have more runs like this that are, I mean, admittedly great, but also allow me to deal with that higher order Maslow's hierarchy of needs bullshit, you know? I know that's a devil card and we're probably better off with it, but I, I have no patience for min-maxing in a situation like this. Now we're taking a little bit too long here. Let's just walk our way roughly to the exit. We've, we've handled this floor. Might as well pick up whatever extra consumables we can along the way. Very surprised that you did not die. Extra pill. I found pills. Could be worse. And we'll, uh, we'll head on to the next floor. Which I'm hoping at this point is just kind of like a normal floor, but I'm a little skeptical. I wonder if, like, this is a combination that I could actually see being, like, kind of good as the Lost. Like, you end up in a room you don't want to be in, you're about to get hit, you're just like, nope, teleport away. But you'd have to be, like, really aware of the fact that you were about to be hit. Alright, I'll tell you what, we'll try it this way. We'll walk in, take damage. Pick up whatever's in here. Two extra bombs, not so bad. Teleport away. We really, like, this run is already won. I feel bad asking for more stuff, but we probably would benefit from maybe like a little bit more, it, it sounds weird to say, but utility. Like if I could get like sack of pennies, it's maybe a little late for sack of pennies to be worthwhile, but anything that gives us like a little bit of, uh, the relic is like the ultimate utility item. You might classify it as like a defense item, I guess, but um, if we got that on this run, I would feel 100% confident. So I am an idiot. And I forgot that there's like a little refractory period where you actually don't pick up consumables. So I keep leaving keys and bombs and shit on the ground. Not a smart idea on my part there. But we'll keep teleporting room to room here. We got enough keys that I would rather just go into the room. Like I'd rather go into the item room and not mess around with it. White feather, that's pretty bad. For all the great stuff on this run, we have had some pretty terrible... Oh, that's the good stuff right there. We have had some pretty terrible item rooms, so... I'm thankful that we got carried so hard in that first boss fight. Uh, if I use Guppy's Paw, I'll teleport away. So I don't really want to... I mean, I want to use it, but I don't want to use it until we finish the room. And that's easy enough. Do I want to use... I'll use it once, yeah. Maybe even twice. Pick up this stuff first, obviously. Uh, and if I don't get the poop back until the end of the floor, that's fine by me. Hey, there we go. Perfect timing. So now we have two Guppy items as well, and I'm very, very confident that we'll be able to become Guppy. We should really get a deal with the devil on this floor, as we didn't get any on technically the last two. Two of hearts is not worth very much for us just yet. Or maybe ever. Depending on how our HP looks. That's bad damage on my part, but shit happens. Make sure we're actually picking up the keys now. Teleport to exactly where you used to be. Starting to feel like it's probably just faster for us to be walking here, but it's a lot less fun. So definitely we want a humbling bundle. Tell you what, I'll buy that and then we'll come out here and we can use the strength card to maybe actually get something out of this demon judgment, although I'm a little skeptical. Range down, not a big deal. Hematomesis, actually amazing for us. I uh, should have played him once before. Ah, it didn't matter actually. Come on, come on. You got something for me, I know, I found pills. That's not really what I was looking for. I feel naked without the, the strength card, weirdly enough. Thank you, old bandage. Saves me some trouble. Oh, messed that one up. Really? That's surprising to me. And you know what, I'm actually gonna use a spirit heart to play you. I, I had a feeling you were pretty close to paying out, so there's a range upgrade to compensate for that range downgrade we got earlier. Not that it matters with Brimstone, but uh, the net gain in speed is pretty nice. So we've been to item room, we've been to shop. We can leave this floor in relatively good conscience if we want to. And it's the Fallen, so this is just incredible. Like, sincerely, potentially game-busting right here. Really good chance of becoming Guppy. Ceremonial Robes is a damage upgrade in and of itself. And uh, we're not going to become Guppy, amazingly enough. Wish I'd kept that Strength card, actually. I gotta go Goathead. 
as much as I would love to um, to mix it up a little bit, and I'd like I'd, I'd like all those items in particular, the ability to fly would be the most immediately useful. But I feel like um, Goathead is is the best for us long term and gives us the the best actual upside. Uh, if you look at it on a grander scale than literally what's going to happen to us in the next room. Depths 2, we're at 12 minutes and 15 seconds basically. That is, it's absurd how quickly this run has gone, I'll admit. Very happy about it. Might as well teleport. Why walk when you can teleport? Why take the elevator when I've got a perfectly good canoe, baby? If, you, if your Austin Powers impression sucks, as mine does, all you need to do is add baby to the end of it and have a vaguely English accent. I know there's many English accents, I'm not trying to, you know, say that there's only one British accent. It's, I know that's probably a pet peeve, you get it all the time. But we don't know, man. If you ask the average American, or North American, I, I, people get bent out of shape when I do this as well. You, are, you are you really using America as a shorthand for the continent of North America? Yeah, I am, because I'm not a dick about it. Everybody understands what you mean when you say America. You don't mean North America. And you certainly don't mean, like, Paraguay. Not to say that there's anything wrong with, you know, the South American countries. It's just, in the colloquial use, America means the United States of America. Anyway, unless specified otherwise. Anyway. Uh, if you ask the average even Canadian to name like two cities in England, you might be able to get two. If you got three, I would be surprised. And I mean that sincerely. It's not that we're ignorant of your country, it's just that, you know, we're like, London? Shit. Then it's basically like, you gotta hope that they watch the Premier League, you know, if they watch... If they watch football, they might be able to give you like a Manchester, Newcastle, Croydon type of thing, you know? I don't know. Suffolk. I'm probably saying the names terribly wrong. Hey, maybe we'd know more of the cities if every time we freaking pronounce them, you didn't go, Oh, it's not, uh, it's not Suffolk. Or it's not Norfolk. It's Norfolk. It's not Middlesbrough. It's Middlesbrough. Come on, give us some... Cr I know you invented the language, but you're taking some serious liberties with it, is what I'm trying to say. What's the one that Arumba always gets at a bent out of shape with, with CK2? I forget... Oh, yeah! Arumba, it's not Derby, even though it's spelled Derby. It's Darby. Arr. Anyway. I've probably offended enough people. Stiff upper lip, and all that. I, uh, I'm not trying to offend the, the English at all, I'm just saying, you know? You can be a little elitist about your, uh, about your, your area names. I live in Canada. Half of the shit in Canada is named after, like, the aboriginal names for it, including the very name of Canada. You know, we have, we have cities named Iqaluit. We have cities named, you know, we have, like, um, Okanagan and stuff like that. I grew up next to a mall. It's called the Cataraque Town Center. When people go, what is it, Catar Cataraki? Cat we go, we don't go, <laughs> well, that's logical, but that's not how it's done. We go, no, it's all right, it's Cataraque. That's a tough word to pronounce, you know? Just be be more forgiving about it. That's my philosophy. Because the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. Might be right for you, might not be right for some. I, I hate Curse of the Lost, man. I just have no idea where I'm going. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to use this moon card for, because we've already been to the... Um, have we been to the right here? Yeah, we've been to the right there. Uh, we've already been to like where we would uh, go if we use the moon card, which is a very roundabout way of saying the secret room. Oh, this must be the right way. See, I thought we were back in the spawn room. I'm not going to teleport for a minute here. This is getting a little too fucky. Bob's around the head twice on the same floor, huh? That's beautiful. Northern Line, you got so lucky on this run. That is true, but do keep in mind how many shitty item rooms I've had. Sagittarius was great, although we immediately made Sagittarius useless. Still super early here. I'm gonna post up here and take a sip of my coffee, which should be a very drinkable temperature by now. Mmm! Wrong! That is, that is still quite potent. It's got scorchability. I mean, we could go donate that, but I've ran out of fucks to give, unfortunately. 
Have we not already been to the- oh, that's the second secret room, okay. Weird. I probably shouldn't have even picked that up, because now it's gonna fuck up my permanent Polaroid invincibility, but that's alright. Let's see what we got going on in here. That was probably the worst damage I've taken on the mom fight in recent memory. I dodged right into it after the shadow appeared. That's alright though. Very easy fight. Of course guaranteed deal with the devil. Now we can pick up the ability to fly on the cheap. Still no guppy shenanigans. Shouldn't have picked up that last spirit heart yet, but... Um, we'll come in here and see what we got. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of any of these. Three of them are space bar items, the other one's ten bombs. So I went through all this boss rush bullshit, bullshit just to get the ten bombs, which is ridiculous. Now I gotta try to, try to find my way to the freaking exit, which I don't even remember where it is at all. Could it be down here? I mean, we got ten bombs now, I might as well make use of them, right? Oh, this, okay. Now I know where we're going. This seems familiar. Again, we could donate, we could teleport, it don't matter. Hoping for no curse of the uh, labyrinth on this floor. Curse of darkness is totally fine. Without a curse of the labyrinth, we're guaranteed to deal with the devil. It gives us the best chance of becoming guppy. I mean, who cares? We're going to win anyway, probably. But Oh, yeah, there you go. A telepills. That's, the telepills took us to where we would have gone with the moon card. Moon card, anyway. Weird. That's not a guppy item, I can't help but notice. You know these telepills, luck up. Luck up is very nice. I can see forever is pretty good. Telepills again, just in case that can actually take us to the error room, whereas, you know, Broken Remote can't, maybe. If, if Broken Remote could have taken us to the error room, I would have expected to have been at the error room. Not, like, not forever, but at least once over the course of this rambling episode here. Although it's been quite short, it's still only at 17 minutes, which is pretty, pretty nuts. Quite a short Isaac episode, all things considered. And really, like, this is just one good deal with the devil has sorted us here, man. Everything else has been kind of, you know, blasé on this run, but that, that first deal with the devil sorted it out pretty easily. Left hand is tempting, but not that tempting. Ah, there we go, we found our boss room. Looks like it's probably Mr. Fred, but it could be Double Fallen, which would be incredible. Oh, good. Luckily, we found the boss anyway. It's Mr. Fred. Mr. Fred seems like a, the most common boss uh, for this floor. It's Mr. Fred and Conquest, which are coincidentally the two that can completely ruin your... Um, completely ruin your uh, Book of Revelations plays. It's alright. HP plus the tears upgrade. Shot speed down is meaningless. Satanic Bible... It's gonna teleport us away, but I'll use it. And Guppy? Well, more spirit hearts. I'm not gonna stick with Satanic Bible. I'm going back with the poop, strangely enough. Oh, we should... Uh, doesn't really matter. Why am I going back with the poop? It's the teleportation, man. I don't need Satanic Bible to win this run. I don't even know how to read, motherfucker. Curse of the Unknown, that's all right. More keys. We could theoretically... Well, that's nice. Could theoretically be pretty close to our boss room right here. I'm gonna take I Can See Forever with me. Oh man, we can go to our curse room for free. Let's do so. Please make me guppy. Alright. Well, I, I'd say that's probably roughly the end of the guppy dream then. It's a shame it had to end like that, but it happens. See that, I mean, I'm actually, I'm mostly using the Poop Doctor's remote for absurdity's sake. But I have to admit that it is also kind of like tactically useful in some weird situations. Like, if you don't want to fight a boss room, you can just fly right the hell out. Not the boss room, sorry, but like a boss trap room. You can just fly right the hell out. No problem. If you reach a dead end and you don't want to fight the enemies on the dead end room, teleport away, man. You might teleport back into it. That's the, that's the real danger, but it's not that big of a problem. Let's try to make some progress here towards what I assume is going to be the boss room. Reroll my whole run. No, just a, a lot of money that we probably are going to be unable to do literally anything with, but that's okay. It happens. Consumables are all sorted here for us, which I like a lot. Scrambled that guy's eggs right there. Gave him the drunk eye. 
friend of mine always told me, you know you're intoxicated when, you know, someone does like the follow the eye test that the doctor always does on you and you can't do it. And I think we did that to that uh, gentleman right there. I believe it's called uh, Leahy's Sign for ear, nose, and throat technicians. Now, you shouldn't be going to an ear, nose, and throat doctor in order to have them take care of your, uh, you know, cognitive problems. But I understand, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. They've all been to medical school, you know. Your vet could perform surgery on you if they had to, I'm sure. I'm positive. Maybe don't, like, go to the vet trying to get cheap surgery. There actually is, I'm not sure if it's real. I, why do I talk about this shit in my videos? I'm not sure if this is real or if it's a, a quote-unquote urban myth. But during the, um, like, segregation era in the United States, I've heard stories, and I don't know if it's true, but there would be doctors who would refuse to operate on African-American patients, and as a result, they would, you know, again, necessity is the mother of invention, they'd have to find, like, we, either willing doctors, or if they lived in a small town, sometimes, like, willing veterinarians. That shit is inhuman, man. Human society's come a long way, still got a long way to go, but, jeez. Come on now. Isn't that, that's got to be against the Hippocratic Oath. I have to imagine. That's in the Hypocrite Oath. That was a surprisingly difficult joke to make. My brain didn't work with the old Greek as well as it should have. I don't know if Hippocrates is it. The Hippocratic Oath is the thing that doctors, you know, take before they, um, before they become doctors. Or, you know, in order to, like, uh, affirm their values and their principles and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that nowhere in the Hippocratic Oath does it say, oh, by the way, like, all, none of this applies if the person you're operating on or looking after isn't the same race as you. Because that would just be crazy! Like, I'm pretty sure that that's just, that they've added their own addendum to the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocritic Oath. There you go. That joke makes more sense now. Apologies to all the true racists out there. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll T100 this run just to fuck with it. It'll, oh shit, I forgot about that. Okay, so we're gonna go back here. I didn't mean to do this, I meant to take the D100. I forgot that by using the pills we would teleport right away. Also by using the D100 we're gonna teleport right away, which is gonna be hilarious. Uh, okay, the D20. We could D100 the D20. That's a little, that's too many Ds for me. I can handle like one, probably. My own. Once we get into, like, different, you know, too many going at the same time, I'm not sure if I can deal with it. Okay. Unicorn Stump would be awesome as well, but, yeah, we're definitely going to take D100. I think we might have rerolled that into awesome stuff. Do I, what is going, oh, I have Triple Shot Ipecac Rubber Cement. It's so incredibly slow, and, of course, Tough Love is in here as well. It's so incredibly slow. But it does so much damage as well. That's kind of hilarious. I must have the magnet or something as well. Oh, that was, yeah, really good right there. I really like this run right now. This is incredible. But we're going to reroll it, because that's what we do when you have the D100. I'm trying, this is me firing as fast as I can, by the way. Taking a little damage in the process. I don't think it's likely to matter all that much. There you go. We have nuns that we don't have nuns have it. Or if we did, we don't have it anymore. Concussive Tears is a damage upgrade. Uh, we also got... I'll take this for increased rate of fire. Fuck it, I'll take all of these. The reason I'll take all of these is because they're they're all just going to be reroll pedestals for us in the future anyway. So even though it does lower our damage a little bit, I'm going to take them all because they're going to... It just gives us more opportunity to reroll into ridiculous shit. Oh, we have a Spoon Bender on this run as well. So this is actually like a super overpowered run, which is really awesome. I don't want to D4 the D100. So I think what I can maybe do is D100 the D4. But I, I'd like to reroll my run with the D4 first, but it'll reroll the D... No, it won't reroll the D100 if I do. It's weird, man. Just just go with it, alright? So what we're gonna do here... Let me see if this works. We're gonna D4. That's gonna teleport us. Which is fine. And then we got like a... Tech 2, Tech 1, Halo. Or Tech 2, Tech point five Halo. It's actually Tech 1, Tech point five. I got all of it wrong. And then immediately, we're just going to reroll the shit out of that. And see what we get here. Um, we got, like, Anti-Grab, Shielded Tears, Bob's Brain. We Lord of the Flies. Oh, we got Tiny Planet. Proptosis, maybe? Like, I don't think it's Proptosis, actually. Now that I think about it, it's probably Dead Onion. 
because our shot speed is so low. Sissy long legs. This is going to be the combination we're going to use to fight our boss. It's a fucking weird one, though. And this is why I love the D100, because it can create bullshit like this. Yeah, Butterbean, that's a good one. Classic. Now, admittedly, there was Virgo back there. Not really that concerned about Virgo, to be honest with you. I don't think we're going to need it. We do have an extra life as well, in case things go terribly, terribly wrong. I doubt they will. I mean, the pills would be good. If we went with Virgo, the pills would be good. There's no uh, denying that, but... Alright, if we have Shielded Tears... We have RoboBaby 2.0 as well. If we have Shielded Tears... We should really just put up, like, a bunch of fucking Shielded Tears in front of us. Oh, we do have Lord of the Flies, because all the flies that he's creating are coming to us. Oh, there we go. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create, like, a sweet-ass barrier around him. And Lost Contact Shielded Tears should pretty much make it so that I can't be hit until he moves to a slightly different area of the map. Thereby rendering my earlier efforts completely inconsequential. It's going to be real hard for him to sneak some shots in there. Some Somehow he's still managing, so I don't feel that bad for him. We're still going to win. There's pretty much no uh, concern about that. It's over. Wild run. Fun run. I had a good time. I hope you did as well. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.